All right, we'll go ahead and start our, our availabilities this morning here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. We are now joined by our defending race winner, Joey Logano, driver of the number 22 Shell Pennzoil Ford. Uh, Joey, tell us about your confidence heading into the weekends. Um, you were able to get the win here last year and advance on to the next round. Yeah, I feel pretty good about it. This has been um, a good racetrack for us the last couple of years. Um, and obviously, it's my home track, so I talk about that a lot when I come up here. But I uh, really want to win here again. Um, but I feel like we're in good good position after last week at a, a solid finish. Um, you know, position itself is pretty good to be able to uh, you know, race fairly aggressive uh, through this race and uh, try to get a win like we did last year. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. Please state your name and affiliation. We'll start with Bob and then come up front. Uh, Bob Hocker, CSPN.com. Uh, Jeff Gordon breaks the consecutive streak record uh, this weekend. You're on pace to break it if you go the next 15 <laughs> plus years, it's a little, just a little over 15 year, more years, and you would be able to break that record. Can you do it? I got a long ways to go. <laughs> 15 years. Holy crap. I'm only 25. <laughs> I mean, I guess I, I have a chance. Um, you know, you never know, uh, you know, what's going to happen or, uh, you know, how, what life will bring you. But, uh you know, obviously, congrats to, to Jeff on, on what he's accomplished. Uh, that's a that's a big deal. You know, I don't think people should, you know, look over that. You know, and I, I can tell you, you're not for sure. But um, you know, to to start that many races uh, consistently, that's unbelievable. So, uh, congrats to Jeff on that. I have a long ways to go. It's not really on my radar yet, but at least I'm on track, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> go ahead and mark that in your calendar. Yeah, we'll go up front. Uh, Jared Turner, FoxSports.com. Joey, good to see you. Um, I wanted to ask you, you know, you've obviously had um, some moments with Kevin Harvick in the past, you guys not seeing eye to eye, but what was sort of your reaction to the incident last week with he and Jimmy and uh, just kind of wanted to get your take? I really don't have much of a reaction, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, just I'm focused on my own thing. You know, it, it is what it is. That's what... Uh, you know, it seems to, to happen during the chase. Emotions seem to uh, get fired up pretty quick. And, uh, you know, I don't really have a reaction. I'm not surprised. I'm not, you know, anything. I just, it is what it is. All right, we'll go to Claire and then Jeff. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. This is a good track for you. And although you size up the competition by staying in your own box and trying to keep that at bay, we know that Kevin Harvick is really going to be desperate to get a win and uh, to continue on in this round of the chase. Do you look at... Any changes like that when you're just away and thinking about it, like where everybody stacks up and what they need uh, as you race them in this round? Yeah, it's smart to, to keep tabs on where everyone's at and what they got to do to get to the next round. Um, you know, do I think the four car has to win one of these next two races? No, I don't think that. I think you can still get in by points, um, but you'd have to have two really good races. Um, so uh, if he can win, I, I expect him to be aggressive, but I would expect that before. You know, throughout we, the way we raced the whole season up to this point was racing with nothing to lose. So we're kind of used to that a little bit. Now, now there's something to lose for some of us, but there's still some cars out there that have nothing to lose, and, and, and we'll go for it like we did before. So I wouldn't expect anything different there. All right, we'll go to Jeff and then over to the right. Jeff Buck from USA Today. I, I know you said you're concentrating on your own thing, but if Harvick somehow did get eliminated after this first round, you would think that would really benefit those of you who are left in the chase because – it's a huge threat gone. I mean, do you consider that? Would, would that help you guys at all? Would that be a bonus for you to have a major threat out of it that early? Uh, I mean, you, you, you know, it's the way this whole playoff chase system works when you're knocking out cars. You know, you want to knock out the fastest cars you can, right? So, that, you know, it's not a bad thing. Obviously, the four car is one of the fastest cars every week. Um, obviously, they, they led points most of the season. Um, so, you know, they get speed everywhere they go. I wouldn't consider them out at this point by no means. They're, they're still a very strong team, and they'll be up there racing hard. But, um, you know, and trying to get through the next round, uh, you know, but if, if we if we are able to knock them out, we are able to keep them from winning a race, and, and um, you know, we, we focus on our own thing. That's the main thing, though. As long as we focus on what we need to do, whatever happens throughout the rest of this chase is what it is with everybody else. You know, we just got to make sure we get to Homestead. Um, but... You know, if you look at the big picture, obviously you, you want the fastest cars out because it gives you the best chance when you get to Homestead. But, you know, I'm not going to change to do anything different. 
uh, out there. I still got to get myself there. That's priority one is getting getting our team to, to Homestead. Uh, Mark Garrell, PRN. Joey, it seems like uh, Team Penske is the only one at this point lately, speed-wise, competitively as well, has kept Joe Gibbs racing honest. Uh, your thoughts on their streak and what you guys need to do to, to uh, step up and beat these guys? Yeah, you know, I feel like we're, we're right there with them. You know, uh, even last weekend in, in Chicago, I thought we had a, a very fast Shell Pencil Ford that had speed in the car, um, ran up top five all day, had a had a legit shot at winning that last restart. I felt like we were in position with our four tires and where we were starting. Um, you know, but it, when you're racing against four cars that are very, very fast and they're all pretty equally matched with speed, that's what kind of makes them look like they're the next level. You know, it's not just one car that's doing it. It's not two cars that are doing it. It's all of them, which is impressive. You don't see many teams that can put four cars together running fast, uh, really ever. You know, so that's pretty impressive what they're doing there. Um, you know, and obviously they're, I think they're top four in points here right now. So they're, uh, they're strong, but I, I don't look at them as stronger than us. They just have more numbers out there. You know, they have more cars. Um, you know, and I feel like Team Penske's right, right where we need to be. I think we're really close. Um, you know, I think we're, we're fighting with them every weekend for, for wins. So uh, I don't think we have to stay, take a step back and say, oh, my God, we're doing something wrong or they're so much faster than us. They're not faster than us. Um, you know, there's a lot of circumstances that we got to, you know, obviously have to go just right to win these things just like anybody else does. And I feel like, like I said, we, we have speed in our race cars, so we're not, we're not far off at all. All right, we'll go to Lee and then Dustin. Lee Spencer, motorsport.com. NASCAR's meeting with team managers uh, later this afternoon to talk about the rules package for next year. Given all the different packages that you've driven this year, and, you know, Penske's been successful with all of them, um, do you lean one way or another as to what you'd like to see in 2016? Uh, I, I would say all of us would like to see the, the 16 package or the, the low downforce package. I think everyone wants to see that, um, you know, for, for 16. Um, yeah, I know the drivers want to be down that direction. I think a lot of us, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys have, have watched the races and, and uh, you have formed your own opinions from it. But from, from my standpoint, I thought the low downforce package put on the best racing. Um, I thought Darlington was one heck of a race, and it's really hard to have a good race there. You know, it's, it's a tough racetrack to, to put on a good race, and it's been quite a few years since we've seen a really good race at Darlington, and, and it was able to do that. Kentucky, once again, was an also a great race. So our two data points that we have from that low downforce package was really good. Um, you know, so I think all of us want to go that direction. Um, there's obviously a lot of other questions that go along with that, and, you know, what tire do you match up with it? What you know, other little parts and pieces that have to go along with the package. But I think if you look at the, the, big, the big piece of the puzzle, uh, I think everyone wants to go that direction. We'll see where it goes. Yeah, well, when you, when you take the downforce off, you're also taking a lot of drag off the car. So it makes you feel like you got more horsepower again. So it, it gives you the feeling that it's almost, the horsepower is almost back to last year before the Tabor Spacer. So it, it gives you that feeling um, just because you don't have that aero drag that's pulling you back so much. Thanks. All right, we'll go to Dustin and then Woody. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. I've got two questions. Um, first off, the top lane here on starts and restarts is obviously the superior lane. So if you're stuck on the inside lane, how do you make that work at any time? And, and especially with, I guess, with these restarts maybe being more closely monitored, how much of a challenge is that if you're on the inside lane to maintain, even to maintain or have a chance to gain position on a start or restart? I don't, I think the lanes are actually more equal here than you think. Um, you know, I, I've, I've seen. In, in the race here in July, was it six of the seven restarts, the leader was, uh, the leader was on the outside and maintained the lead. There was one time the, lead, the second place guy on the inside took the lead, but most of the time, first two or three rows, the guys on the outside. Can, can plug the along lead. okay. Um, you know, and, and that might just be for the front row. You know, but as you go a little bit further back, that's what I was talking about, a little further back to second, third, fourth row, they seem a little bit more equal from the top to the bottom. Uh, but the first, the top lane typically, uh, you know, has a, has a good chance in, to, to restart well and, and some reason have a little bit better momentum through turn one and be able to set yourself up good for uh, off of two. Um, you know, and, and, and what can you do? Well, 
hopefully we all just play by the rules of what NASCAR has laid out for us, and, and, and hopefully NASCAR enforces that this week. Uh, I think that's what we're all looking for um, as drivers is we want the – you know, not to be able to lay back. We want to be able to, to restart where we need to restart and let the control car as the leader be the control car and not uh, the second place car by laying back. Obviously, a lot of talk this week about uh, Jimmy and Kevin, what happened last week in their incident. You've, you've had your situations with Kevin. Um, is he more bark than bite? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it, like I said, I'm staying out of this one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to be part of this one. Let me tell you right now. <laughs> I'm just happy to be out of the drama. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've been in it plenty long. I want to be out of the drama and focus on my race cars. So uh, sometimes it's best off just to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> All right. We'll go ahead and finish up with Woody. Hey, Joey, Woody came with MRN. You, having been through it last year, we're coming to our first elimination race next week, and the way this thing has started off now, based on the couple of questions you've gotten about that, did it feel different when you got to each of those? And do you think this will be any different this year or even more intense? It, it does feel different because um, there's a lot on the line. But it changed. It felt different last week in, in Chicago. And as much as you try to make it feel like it was the rest of the season and nothing changes and, and you tell yourself that and, and you tell your team that, but something does change, right, because it's, it's the playoffs. You know, it's, it's going to get a little bit more intense, um, you know, and, and, and there's a lot more on the line. Uh, so it's going to feel different, and as uh, depending on your position, after the first two races, is going to you know decide what your intensity level is when you get to Dover uh, or you get to an elimination race. Uh, so, um, like I said, hopefully we get through this race well, and we can go through Dover and, and you know feel comfortable about what we're doing there, and, and, and you know not have much pressure. But uh, you know it's it's one race at a time for us. All right, thanks for joining us, Joey, and good luck this weekend. Great. Thanks, guys.